Hi, everybody. My name is Fernando Ruiz. Thanks for tuning in. I'm a professional illustrator, cartoonist, and comic book artist. I've drawn many comic books over the years, including uh, Archie's Weird Mysteries, Life with Archie, and the wildly popular Archie vs. Predator miniseries. In addition to my comic book work, I'm also an instructor at the Kubert School. I've been teaching there for many, many years. And today what I want to do is talk a little bit about basic drawing and how we can get started drawing all those things that may uh, seem difficult or a little challenging to us. I'm going to teach you the secrets of the universe. So let's get started. Thanks a lot. All drawing is broken down into six basic shapes. Whatever it is that you want to draw, whether it's people, animals, monsters, aliens, machines, cars, anything at all that you can imagine, real, unreal, can be broken down into one or more of these basic shapes. So if you can draw these basic shapes, you can draw anything. And I am being absolutely honest about this. And we're going to take a look at how this is done. So, but first, just what are these six basic shapes? Well, first we have, let's try and get this in here, the sphere. The sphere, the round sphere. Next, we have the all-purpose cube. The cube. Then there is the cone. We have the pyramid. And my shapes are, are very rough here because I just want to scribble them out for you. But we'll see in a moment how we could still put them to use. The pyramid, the cylinder, and lastly, number six, the wedge, the wedge. These are the six basic shapes. If you can master these shapes, you can draw anything. And I know you're watching this, looking at these very simple geometric shapes, and you're not believing me. But it is true. I, I promise you it is true. Now, the reason uh, we do this, it, it makes drawing a whole lot easier. Because every artist out there and every person who wants to be an artist there's stuff that frightens them. There's stuff that intimidates them. Things that they want to draw, but they feel it's too complicated, too hard. Let's, for example, take a simple arm, a human arm. Now, a lot of times when we think about drawing an arm, while well, we're thinking about all the muscles and all the, uh, the um, you know, the, the anatomical detail and, and you know, perhaps clothing and, and folds and things like that. But if we break that arm down, if we, if we talk about drawing a cylinder, for, for example, well, a cylinder, a cylinder is a lot easier than an arm. It's a lot more accessible to people. So yeah, maybe an arm might be a scary thing to draw, but I can draw a cylinder. And maybe I can attach a sphere to that cylinder. That's not, that's still not too hard. And then maybe we could attach another cylinder. Okay. Well, what I have here, and maybe we could attach all of that to another sphere. So what I have here is really the basics of, of an arm, uh, of an actual human arm. Now, you look at this and, and maybe you say, well, maybe an action figure arm, but not like a flesh and blood person. Well, you have to remember, this is the part of drawing that we call the underdrawing. OK, 
okay? This is your foundation for drawing. And the foundation, that, that's, that's sort of the, the guts, the framework for your drawing. It's, it's the, same way, the, the same way if you were building a house. Um, you don't start out the house by painting the walls. First, you need to build the walls. And, for, and actually, before that, you need a frame to put the walls on. And that's what, this, that's what this basic shape construction is. It's building that, that frame, that foundation, the underdrawing. So once we have our shapes in place, well, this is when we can start shaping our shapes, modifying our shapes, to turn into an arm. And yeah, we could start now at this point, we could start adding the anatomy, the deltoids being your shoulder muscles, your biceps, your triceps, the elbows, all of those forearm muscles, which have very long names. And before you know it, you have an arm, a believable human arm. And we could even attach a hand to that. So what we've done is if drawing an arm was scary, intimidating, uh, it just seemed like something too hard, what we did is we turned it into something easy. We turned it into something that wasn't scary, something that, that is more manageable. Now I know as you're, you're watching me, you, you might be thinking, well, that looks kind of easy. Um, keep in mind, you know, I, I, I have been drawing for a while and I've drawn a number of arms in my day. So I know, you know, I know somewhat how to make a, a pretty convincing arm. And to really know how to draw an arm that, that convincingly, um, that does take experience. You know, you're not going to go from cylinders to, to perfect anatomy overnight. Um, but the cylinders do make it easier. And this is just an arm. We can, as I said, we can apply this basic shape theory to anything, anything at all that you, you may want to draw. So why don't we tackle something a little more complicated, okay? Let's tackle an entire person. Now we take, and, and you know, drawing people, very common problem. We all want to draw people and we, we want to be able to draw our favorite characters the way we imagine them, the way we see them, uh, and we want them to look good. But this, you know, there's a lot of detail there. Once again, this is very important. Details are what you leave for last. You want to start with the form, with the shape of the person that you're drawing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I, I don't want to draw a person. Well, I do want to draw a person. That, that's going to be my end goal. But at, I want to start first by simplifying that person. Okay. I want to, I don't want to worry about you know, muscles and, and arms and legs and all that other complicated stuff. I am, I am using the basic shapes like building blocks. And I'm attaching these building blocks to other building blocks to build up a figure. Now I am drawing a little bit darker than normal because I want you guys to be able to see what it is that I'm doing. Normally you're, you're underdrawing your foundation. Normally this is done very lightly because nobody ever sees this stage. Nobody ever sees this stage of things. I'm going a little darker because I want to make sure that you guys at home can see these lines and what I'm doing with these lines. So I've basically built myself a little mannequin man here. Let me pull 
scroll out a little bit so you can see most of him. So he's really like this blank figure. Okay, he, he is my foundation. So on this guy, once, once, I've, once I'm happy with my foundation, well, now what I can do, okay, is I could take him and I could start to turn him into something more human looking, more organic looking. So he looks a little bit more flesh and blood. So I'm gonna smooth out the, the cube that I was using for the torso. And notice too, and now at this stage, as I get to the, the what we call the refinement, okay, we, we, we've scribbled in our basic shapes, now we're refining those shapes to be slightly less basic. But notice, as I, as I go along, I'm getting darker. I'm getting darker, more, more defined with my line. And you know, I'm, I'm still at, at this stage, I'm not above erasing. I'm absolutely, I don't think you're, you ever get to a point where you should be above erasing. Um, and when I say erasing, I, I'm, what I'm talking about is looking at maybe this arm and maybe I say, maybe I look at it and I don't like it. Well, I'll just nuke it. I'll just get rid of that arm and, uh, you know, draw another arm. Maybe put in basic shapes. Maybe I want the arm extended a little bit more. So I'll do that in. I'll put in those basic shapes and then try and and mold the arm into something I'm, I'm happier with. Notice also, I like to jump all over the figure. And when I say that, what I mean is I'm not starting from the top of my figure, finishing off the head, and then slowly moving down, taking each body part at a time. I prefer to keep my eye on the entire figure. And this way, this way, I can, I can control the entire figure, make sure the entire figure is being developed um, equally. You know, this way I, I don't have a very nice arm and a very nice head, but they don't go well together. You know, they, maybe the head is too big, maybe the arm is too short. This way I'm, I'm constantly stepping back, judging my figure deciding, okay, this is how I want him to be. Give him some hands, making fists. And actually, you know what? I'll take out this arm. Sometimes I won't even erase and Instead, what I'll do is I will draw over, right over the arm I didn't like. So if I didn't like that arm, instead of even erasing it, what I'll do, because normally I'm drawing so lightly, I'll just redraw the arm right over it. And I know, you know, to your eye, it may start looking like it's getting messy. But to me, you know, I'm always, I'm, I'm aware, I'm aware of what I'm doing. So I know where which arm I want. I know where I want the arm to be. So I'm shaping my guy, shaping him, shaping him. Let me come down here. And yes, um, to get, you know, to be able to draw uh, good anatomy, that does take practice. That isn't gonna happen. Uh, fast or inst certainly not instantly. Um, it takes practice. It takes a, a good, a fair amount of study and practice and getting that comfort and familiarity with the shape of the, of the human body and knowing how the, the human body looks and will act in different poses and different angles. So 
So this is your basic strongman kind of built athletic muscular type character. And again, the muscles, all those muscles. And if I were going to give him some more elaborate, uh, you know, costuming, um, clothing or, or things like armor, that would all come last. I want to make sure before I start adding those details that I have a solid enough body to build those details on. So that is a quick body. Now I know what some people will say at this stage, they might say, well, you know, that's pretty good. That does make things a little easier, but I'm not even at the stick figure stage. I are at the basic shape stage. The, the basic shapes, uh, the, the, that mannequin that I started out with, even that's kind of intimidating uh, for me. Well, that's no problem. We could get even easier. That's what this lesson is all about, taking what is complicated and making it easier. So if the basic shapes still scare you or, or put you off, what we can do then is work, say, with this guy. I'm sure you all remember this guy, the stick figure. This is how most of us get our start drawing, drawing stick figures. When we're little kids, this is how we, we first experience drawing. This is what passes for, for a figure for us, the stick figure. And let me just say, it's a totally legitimate way of drawing, absolutely legitimate way of drawing. There's, there's no fear involved with the stick figure. I think all of us are at the stick figure stage uh, safely. I think we could safely say that we, we can handle a stick figure. So if the, the basic shapes, if, you don't, if you're not sure what to do with the basic shapes, how to position them, get even more basic. Start with a stick figure mannequin. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase our friend here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a stick figure mannequin. Okay, I'll start with the head. And I'm going to lay down a line for the shoulders, line for the spine, maybe a leg. And I'm going to have the leg, I'm going to do a bit of a running pose. So I'm going to have this leg coming forward and another leg going back. And maybe an arm going way back. Okay and another arm coming forward like this. So here we go, very, very rough stick figure. Again, I would, you know, left to my own devices, I would be drawing this very, very lightly, but I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. The, uh, the great thing about a stick figure, if you've drawn anything you don't like, again, get rid of it, replace it. Because with the stick figure, everything you're drawing, it's going to be really, really fast. It's going to be really instant. You, you don't spend hours drawing a perfect stick figure arm. If you're doing that, man, you're, wa you're wasting time. Um, so there, didn't like the arm. This also gives me the opportunity to do something called pushing a pose. So if you want to make your poses more exciting, more fluid, a lot of times I'll at this stage, I'll look at my guy and I'll say, maybe I want him leaning forward more. Maybe I want him pulling up this arm, maybe bending it. Maybe this arm can be coming at us more. Maybe this leg can be coming up straighter and the other leg can be bent more. So I hopefully will get a more exciting pose that way, a more, uh, and a, a less stiff figure, more fluid figure. Uh, stiffness in figures, very common problem. And the best way around that really um, 
and this may not be the easy answer, drawing lots of figures. Just keep drawing, keep drawing, keep drawing. Okay, back to our stick figure. So I've got my, my guy in place. And now what I can do is I can, just like I did before, I'm gonna plug in my basic shapes. And when I, when I insert these basic shapes, you, you don't have to be, they don't have to be perfect. You know, I'm not drawing perfect cubes here and perfect cylinders. They're just rough shapes. They're, these shapes are really almost placeholders. Using these basic shapes also help in what we call the, the science, the frustrating science of foreshortening. When you're making something look like it's coming forward or going backwards, like I'm doing with these legs here. Again, I, I'm, I like to jump all over the figure, so you're seeing me move up one leg, down the other leg, over to an arm. And again, this just, this just lets me uh, retain control uh, of the entire figure. This way I'm not spending two hours drawing an immaculate arm that ends up looking funny because it's it's not playing well with the other arm. It's, it's too short for the other arm. Um, or it's, it's too long and the legs end up too short. You know, th things like that. You want to always be aware of how the, the entire figure is turning out. So I've plugged in my basic shapes. And now again, I go to the refinement stage, to the refinement stage. And this is where I start to shape. I start to mold. This is where I start to add the anatomical detail that will make my person, well, look like a person. Make an arm look like an arm, soften the, the hard lines, start adding in some little uh, anatomical landmarks chest muscles, the, pec the pectoral muscles, your biceps, triceps are peeking out, all those pesky forearm muscles. And this isn't that complicated a, of a pose. In a moment, I'm going to show you guys how we can really push this system into getting an even more dynamic pose. And once you start considering dynamic poses, well, that, that's when things can, can really get scary because then you're, you're kind of twisting the body into, into angles that we don't normally see. You know, most of us, unless we lead very interesting lives, we're not used to seeing people swing from building to building or fly from the moon. Uh, you know, so we often have to use our imaginations for these poses. And being able to deconstruct a body like this really, really helps us to do that, it really lets us draw convincing exotic poses. So sometimes even at this stage, I may want to push again that foreshortening. I may want to bring this leg up even more. And maybe what I'm gonna do is tuck the lower leg underneath the, the top thigh the upper thigh, I should say. You can see a little bit more of the other leg. In fact, maybe might even want to bring this one back a bit, turn it a little bit more to us. And you can do that when you have an understanding of those basic shapes. Because 
what you're doing is you're moving around shapes. You're not moving around a leg. You're not moving around an arm. You are repositioning shapes. guy is he's coming together he's coming together better and better and I could keep going and I could keep noodling him adding all the little details that I want the face anything at all if I wanted to add hair or armor or anything else that uh, that I would want to add, I could do that at this stage, okay? Because I have a fairly solid body that I'm fairly comfortable with here. So I could add the details that I, that I would want. But it all began with a, with basic shapes. And actually, this guy started with a stick figure. Okay. All right. Let's let's try let's try something a little bit more complicated, a little more exotic. Let's take a stick figure, and okay. Let's start out with the head here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna curve really curve that spine, and I'm gonna pull that arm. I'm gonna push that arm really back. And another arm is gonna be over here, coming down forward. And I'm gonna bend a leg up this way and another leg coming down this way. So I've got a real, you know, this is gonna be a real crazy pose. And I know some of us, when we look at certain poses, we feel, well, we, we, we can't handle that pose again. If it's scary, if it seems complicated, simplify. Take what's complicated and turn it into something not complicated. Do the stick figure. So I've got my stick figure and maybe again, eh, don't like that arm. Well, let's change it. We'll change the arm. Okay. Now, once I've got my guy in place, at least the framework in place, now I could start to add those, those basic shapes. Cylinders for the legs, wedge for the feet, spheres for joints like the, uh, the uh, deltoids, the shoulders, spheres for other joints like the elbows, cylinders for the forearms, cylinders for really all the, the extremities, all the legs, the limbs, arms and legs. A little bit of foreshortening again on this arm because I want it to be telescoping back and basic shapes really make doing something like that easier. Because remember, you're not foreshortening an arm, you're foreshortening a couple of cylinders. So that, that should make things easier. And as I, as I always tell my students, the more you do this, the easier it gets. And, and that touches upon something I was saying earlier. The more you do this, the more you're gonna know about the body, the more you're gonna be, the more comfortable you'll be with the body and you'll be able to move it, you'll be able to produce it using your imagination more and more. So now I'm going to the refinement stage. I'm going to, to smooth out those, geo, those hard geometric shapes I'm going to turn the, the wedge into a foot. I'm going to turn the, the spheres into actual shoulders. The head, which is an oval, 
a cousin of the sphere. Give the arms a bit more of a shape. Don't want to get too far into the face, but sometimes I sometimes I like to indulge too. Sometimes I can't help myself. And you'll notice too, uh, as you if you do keep if you do this more and more, if you do keep up with this, something you'll notice is all these stages that we've been talking about, the stick figure, the basic shapes, the refinement stage. As you become more comfortable drawing figures and, and different characters, you'll see there's going to be a lot more of an overlap in these stages. Everything won't be constantly looking, this, you know, you won't have to uh, constantly take each stage so separately. And you could also use this system to draw that nemesis of all artists, the human hands. Every artist has trouble drawing hands. If you have trouble drawing hands, don't feel bad. You're, you are certainly not alone. Everybody has trouble drawing hands. And hands, that could actually be a, a video all its own, how to draw hands. Again, I, I like to, I should be resisting details like costume uh, details, but eh, sometimes, sometimes you give in, sometimes you indulge. I'm giving this guy a bit more of a leg, a bit more of a curve to the calves of the leg, and I'm going to give him a foot, and hopefully he, he doesn't look stiff. Hopefully he looks nice and dynamic. Because this is a guy I want to I want him to look exciting. You could probably guess who this guy is. It's okay. And you know, Spidey, Spider-Man here. Spider-Man is not an easy character to draw. And a lot of artists, a lot of professional comic book artists will tell you that. Spidey, uh, well, right off the bat, Spidey likes a lot of weird poses. So he really challenges you as an artist to, um, to draw him in those crazy poses in a very convincing way. Spidey's costume, which which I always love, it's a very classic design. Um, also, may not be totally artist friendly because number one, you have all these lines going around his body, um, and you need to apply those lines well, believably, um, and moving and the way they would move all across the body. And then Spidey also has that that spider web which would go that that web pattern which would go all around his uh, his body, the, the the red parts of his costume. I'm more of a fan of smaller Spider Man eyes. I've always liked the the classic John Romita Spider Man face face in quotation marks, because uh, we're talking about a full face mask here. I'm not gonna get into all that webbing, um, but I did want him to look somewhat finished so that you could see him, so you could recognize him as Spider-Man. So there we go, Spidey, and he started, he started as just a basic stick figure. He started out as just a very simple stick figure. I plugged in my basic shapes. And, oh, you know what I forgot? 
How can I forget this? How can I forget Spider-Man's spider? I will, I will add that. That that won't be a big deal. Uh, and also, I'm a fan of the underarm webbing. I like giving Spidey that webbing. So there's my Spidey, and uh, you know he, I I drew him fast because I don't want to put you guys through every moment of my of of my refinement process. I did want you guys to um, to get a feel for the the stages, but uh, often the these these stages, you know, they may require a little bit more time. So, and certainly, you know, time to to smooth out the rough edges to the drawing, uh, make him a little bit more polished. Um, like I said, normally I draw, you know, when when drawing alone for myself I'll draw much more lightly and that will allow me to to do away more easily with all of these construction lines and what we call construction lines are all the lines uh, of that foundation that we've been talking about all the lines that build up the figure and make the the figure look like who he is Now, as I said before, this system that I've been talking about, um, you can draw anything, anything at all with this system. So I know some of you may be looking at Spider-Man over here and you may, you may be saying to yourself, well, I'm not necessarily a, a Spider-Man fan or superheroes, I, I like to draw other things. Well, like I said before, whatever it is that you like to draw anything, However you like to draw, whether you like to be cartoonier, more realistic, um, uh, you know, maybe something very specialized like, like you know, manga or anime, uh, whatever it is that you like to draw, these basic shapes will still apply. Whatever it is, anything at all that you may want to draw. You may be using different basic shapes. For example, let's say... I'm starting out with a sphere. Maybe I'll add another sphere here and maybe a bit more of a, of a rounded sphere. Connect them, the cylinders, more cylinders. Yeah, these are tinier cylinders and I'm keeping them a little bit more flexible. And I'm doing that for a specific reason, which will hopefully make sense and then maybe wedges for hands. I always use wedges for, for hands uh, in certain poses. And I use wedges for feet as well. And once I'm at this stage, I could start adding in my details. And you could see Started out pretty much the same way. I may be I may be leaping to the to the face here a little fast, but um, again, I want you guys to be able to see what it is that I'm doing here without putting you through a you know a considerable more time. Again, if I were drawing by myself here without anybody watching me. I'd slow down a little, of course, and I would, uh, you know, take the time to be a little neater. Take the time to be a little what we call tighter, which means there's just not as many uh, shaky, sketchy lines. Now, my dog here, I'm just making him up. So I hope, I hope you're digging my dog. Maybe I'll give him collar and some tags and all cartoon animals have their opposable thumb so they could throw fireworks and 
fireworks at each other. And anvils, that's a big cartoon uh, weapon. Give him a tail. So, you know, something as unreal as a cartoon dog. Oh, his feet are a little big. So, you know what I must do? I must defeat him. Get it? Cartoonists have to be funny. Okay, so there we go. We went from Spider-Man to a cartoon dog. Like I said, anything at all that you can imagine, you can draw using those six basic shapes. What do you think? The main thing, as, as I started to say before, the main thing with all of this and, and really with most of the things that you're going to learn in, in if you keep taking art lessons, um, whether, you, whether you take lessons through a school, through a private instructor, or even just by reading it out of a book, the main thing is to practice. Practice your drawing and trust trust that it does get easier the more you do this the more you do you are comfortable with this and i know uh, it may not seem that way always and sometimes there are these long frustrating stretches where you don't you don't feel like you're getting better but always trust that you are you may be getting better in ways you don't realize um, but keep at it and um and you'll improve so there we go. There's there's my, my cartoon dog, my Spider-Man, and we did uh, a running guy, did a running man, and just the guy standing there, an arm, and it was all built using these six basic shapes. In fact, if you, if you want the little homework from all this, what will really help you is to practice your basic shapes. There's, I, I know it may not sound like the most exciting thing in the world, but believe me, it will make a difference if you could sit down and just practice drawing a cube or drawing a sphere or drawing cylinders. And as you practice, you'll find your shapes will get better and you'll be quicker at drawing those shapes and you'll be adding those shapes in faster and faster. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you guys uh, got something out of this. My name's Fernando Ruiz, and um, I, hope, uh, I hope to be talking to you all again soon, and I hope to be seeing all of your great drawings uh, that you'll be making uh, as a result of this video. Okay, good luck everybody, and as always, Keep drawing. Keep drawing. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye. See you next time, everybody. Keep drawing.